Hey everybody, this is Mike, and welcome to Real Black. Today we have the honor and privilege of being with a great artist, someone who, when you hear his voice, you immediately put you in a time and a place in your life, and I'm so excited to be sharing uh, the stage, this, this few moments with you as uh, you're about to perform here at World Cafe Live, and uh, shortly to be inducted, 2019 inductee with the Zombies into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. Mr. Colin Blenstone. Thank you so much. We are, the Zombies are gonna be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on March the 29th mm. in New York. And we're absolutely thrilled and honored that, that this opportunity has come to us. It surprised me actually when, when I was, when I saw you were coming to town, I said, this has to, I want this to happen. And then um, when I was reading the bio, I was like, 2019? Like, you've been in my Hall of Fame a long time before this. It's, it's, it's sad to me that uh, it, take, it would take the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to, to take so long for you. But. Well, I mean, you know, I, you know, I can't really comment on, on the Rock Hall of Fame. I'm not trying though. to put you on the spot. <laughs> no. But I mean, for us, it just makes it all the, all the sweeter, you know, that we've mm -hmm. had to wait all, all this time. And, uh, you know, there are so many good rock bands out there. The first time we were nominated, and this is our fourth nomination, I was surprised out of my mind because there are so many good bands out mm -hmm. there. Uh, and, and I was really thrilled that we were nominated. And now we've gone that one stage further and we're inducted. I, I just think it's fabulous. And the fact that we've been playing for a long time, I think that's just a side issue, really. Uh, as I said before, it just makes it feel better right. that we've had to wait for it. Right, and the resilience, what I'm, you know, so like I was saying, like the music, when, whenever I hear your voice in a recording, it takes me back to the, the first time that I first heard uh, She's Not There, or, you know, the Zombies, Greatest Hits, or, and then what was odd, you know, years later, I, just through file sharing, quite frankly, I know it's illegal, I discovered all your solo work, the Japanese right. imports one year oh, right. all yes. that stuff and I was like wow what, what, incredible, what an incredible body of work. Do you know it's really funny one year was recorded in about 1970 mm. and uh, we've been here about a week now and every night someone's been talking to me about that album one year. I'm really glad that it's getting some attention now you know because I, um, I, I was very I've always been very fond of that album but it, it was somewhat um, it didn't get a lot of attention in the States. It did in Europe and in the UK, but in the States it didn't. Well, that, that is, let's, let's go into that for a second, because I've, I've seen dozens of interviews with you, but I've never heard you speak about that early solo career. What, uh, one year, what, like thematically, is it really one year? What, is, what was the concept well, the, behind that album? Well, uh, there isn't a concept behind the album, but there is an idea behind the title. At the time, I was quite surprised that it, it, it had taken us a whole year to record an album, remembering that I was brought up in the 60s and albums were recorded in two or three days. Mm -hmm. So uh, for one reason or another, it, it had taken a, a year to record the album and I thought that was quite remarkable and that's why I called it that. Nowadays, that would be quite quick, I think, to record an album in a year oh, yeah. with all the intricacies that go into recording an album now. I'd be quite pleased if I'd finished an album yeah. in a year. Well, I know you're, you're like uh, sort of on your award tour, so to speak, with, with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You're touring, you're in Philadelphia tonight performing solo, but you're also touring with, with the rest of the Zombies, correct? Absolutely, yes. Uh, we've got another, uh, I think, another four dates to do in the north east of the States. And then we go down to Florida and we're going to go on a, a sort of a music themed cruise. There's lots of um, Alan Parsons, uh, Justin Haywood is hosting it, um, Al Stewart, lots of wonderful artists and the Zombies are doing it and my solo band are doing it as well. So I've got to sort of run from, from one band to the other, but I've never ever done that before. So that's going to be interesting. And then when we come off the cruise, I tour with the Zombies and um, we go from uh, Florida across to Texas. Wow, is it good to be this busy? It's, all musicians want to be busy. Okay. All mu but you know, there's an old saying, how do you get a musician to start moaning? Offer him some work. <laughs> all musicians moan when they work, but they moan when they're not working as well. So it's a sort of, it's, a, it's one of the things that goes with being a musician, but overall, musicians want to be busy, definitely. Okay, well, I, and I know you, you You've come in and out of show business. I don't know if I'm completely in or completely out. Or even oh, people are aware I'm so far off the radar on the show business thing. But um, 
one thing I'm curious when I when I talk to music artists, like I know when when I hear your music, it takes me back to a, a time and a place. But when you're performing it, do you have to go to a certain place, or when you're writing it, where where do you go to find your inspiration? Well, writing is that is a. I think I hope this doesn't sound too dramatic, but I think it's quite a deep experience. You really do have to sort of strip yourself naked, really, and that's how I do it. You know, I have to try and probably think of an experience and then you I don't write exactly what happened but that's the spark that's and, and to me that's the wonderful thing about being in the music business to be there at the beginning of a song and see it formed mm -hmm. and then you get into the studio and it goes on to another another level as you record it and then if you're really fortunate you get to take that recording out and make it into a live version and you play to an audience. And that, to me, is the magical process of being in the, in the music industry. Right. And when you're performing it for the thousandth time, does it still, how do you keep it fresh for yourself? Well, I think some song, I'm very fortunate because a lot of the Zombies catalogue does sound as fresh and as relevant today as it did when it was first recorded. So. Uh, I, you know, I really enjoy singing those classic zombie tunes, and my solo ones are not so old, and mm -hmm. I haven't sung them so many times, so right. uh, that's not a problem. Right. And what, what's uh, what's one of the songs that were the solo song? Goodbye. Tell her goodbye. Can you tell get, Caroline goodbye? Tell Caroline goodbye. Can you give us a story on that one? Just so we well, absolutely. Hear. I mean, it's strangely, you should mention Caroline goodbye because I just started writing. Um, very much inspired by Rod Argent and Chris White in The Zombies, who are very prolific writers and who already were quite sophisticated writers, even in their teens. Um, and I'd watched how they'd grown as writers, and I decided I'd like to try. And what, usually when you first start writing, you start writing from sort of teenage angst, you know, mm -hmm. broken-hearted sort of situation. And that's what this song is about. But I made a huge mistake. I used the girl's real name. And I thought only my close friends would know. I, I right. tried every name in the book to, mm. to fill the Caroline goodbye, to get that scan. And I couldn't. So I thought, well, only my close friends will know. But a national newspaper in the UK picked up on it. And there was a double page spread because she's quite famous and she's very glamorous. Oh, wow. And any excuse to get her in a picture in a bikini into a national newspaper is what they did, which they did. And uh, so I'm afraid my secret was out. And, and I've been singing this song ever since about something that happened to me when I was about 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Caroline and I ceased to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But it was... Uh, she was a lovely girl, and it was a long time ago, but um, it was a, a way for me to start writing songs. It was a, a big price to pay, mm -hmm. but it did help me to well, start writing well, songs. Maybe that's what I get from, from your first three solos, is, is that, you know, raw to the bone angst. It is raw. It's really raw. I had a manager at the time who was absolutely ruthless, and he realized that when I split up with girlfriends, I wrote lots of songs and he used to encourage the breakup of my relationships and, and sometimes you know he'd do a little bit of whispering just to stir things up a bit and then we'd get lots of songs okay. so a little bit ruthless all right so caroline is she still watching uh, i hope so caroline <laughs> you're you're all right and uh, i had so many songs out of our relationship so thank you very much okay. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, sit with us. I, I really, you know, I'm becoming a key influencer on um, social media, YouTube. We have like 200,000 subscribers. Wow. So pe people, they can't help but be aware of, of what we're doing. And like I said, you're a key influence to me. Just as we close, what, what were some of the key influencers for you? Who, some of the artists that you... Well, were starting off, of course, the, the greats of early rock and roll would be Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and Little Richard. And it's a thing that all British musicians of, of my era, especially, were all following American artists. And it, all, it sort of made me smile a little bit that when I first came to America, I felt quite guilty, but American audiences were screaming at us and being so enthusiastic. And I really wanted to stop and say, Look, let's, let's stop a minute. We're playing your music. You know, we, we owe you. This is your music. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, it had been through a kind of a British filter. It, it did sound a little bit right. different. But the, the greats of rock and roll were the people that influenced me to start with. 
and look at look at that. See how it goes full circle. Now you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with I all know. the people you just mentioned. Isn't it incredible? How does that and happen? Do you know, in some ways, it's too much for me to take in, to be honest. It, it'll really sink in the night that we're inducted into the Rock Hall. But I mean, right now, I know it's happening, but it is a really big thing. And uh, I, I'm so excited about it. I'd sort of, I have to sort of try and keep it under control a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll get a song out of it. Uh, maybe, um, maybe. The emotion. Well, and, you know, thank you so much. I mean, it's great spending time with you. Cheers, it's been just, great. Like, yes, knowing, thank you. Knowing all the things that you've experienced and seeing through your eyes, I, I just feel a, a honor and privilege to spend time. And I want people watching just to, to appreciate this man, Colin Blundstone. And, um, you know, I think all of your music, but specifically your solo stuff, is ready f for any movie. If you have anybody upset or hurt or in Absolutely, pain, he's, yes. he's put all the pain. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the need. man to come to. He, yeah, <laughs> he's, he lived through the pain, so all you have to just throw throw uh, Caroline underneath or Misty Rose underneath, and and you've you've already done half the work. So Absolutely, license, license the music. And if go you want to feel really sad, come and listen to my music. That's the thing. <laughs> Oh, 
Looks like you're gonna make it in a big world Well, I always be one 